It's no turning back for the government on plastic bags. Following their outlawing as from Monday. The penalties are the highest in the world. Four years in jail and the maximum penalty is 38,000 US dollars. We cannot continue living in this kind of an environment that is so dirty, so polluted with plastic bugs, plastic waste. Something needs to be done. We made it very clear that there are not going to be any arrests this week as people familiarize themselves with the new regulations. So from next week? <laughs> I may, I may. <laughs> Kenya, before the ban, was messed up. I felt that I should do something. I started complaining, I started writing on why plastic bags should be banned. One day, the cabinet secretary, Judy Wahungu, tweeted back. She supported my campaign. Two years later, she banned plastic bags. We had to set the penalties so high so that we, as citizens, understand the dangers of these polythene bags and the plastic pollutants. Initially, I lost some customers. My observation is they are catching up. They are coming with reusable bags. It's normal for human beings. They resist change, but in the long run, they adapt. My end goal is not to see that we don't have plastic. My end goal is to see more sustainable use. And the second life of plastic is where we need to begin. We are destroying our own life. Everywhere you see plastic. When you go fishing, you see plastic. When you're pulling your nets, you catch more plastic than fish. I had a dream to do something to make people understand the importance of the environment. We are making a beautiful plastic dow, completely made of pure recycled plastic, from the keel to everything. I think it's the first in this world. This circular economy philosophy is beginning to get traction here. Innovators have been able to produce beautiful, reusable products using plastics and are able to earn some income. And we're very excited about that. When I see plastic, I see color, I see beauty. I see something that I can use to make something. We cannot call those things trash. We just call them recyclables. Recycling is not totally self-sustainable. People don't realize how much work and cost goes into recovering it from the environment. Somebody has to go pick it up. Somebody has to give it to somebody else. It's the guys in the streets who are making a few shillings. They're first environmentalists. Ali designs every piece of the boat. He will bring us the shape uh, and we're able to build a mold for it. We don't burn plastic, we melt. We compress it and let it cool. That's basically the process. It looks like it's wood, but it's not a wood. It's pure plastic. It's not perfect, we know it. It cracks, it bends, you know, it breaks. But it lasts forever. Construction products create a good end use of plastic. In Kenya, we say it will last the life of your shamba, the life of your land. The first communication of human lives was through the sea. 
There was no plan, it was only Dao. The Dao is communication. Ali Skander's work is just the beginning of big things to come. To convert waste into something valuable, it takes that vision, it takes perseverance to do that. Our plastic DAO is a message to the world. We have to tell our young kids the importance of taking care of our environment. Because they are the leaders tomorrow, it's better that we involve them and be truthful to the coming generation. <laughs>